Now we're moving into mountains and hills. A mountain is a large natural elevation of the Earth's surface rising to a summit or apex. The summit or apex is the highest point. Mountains are usually going to be created from convergent boundaries or some sort of pushing together of the Earth's surface. It may even be formed into a volcano if magma is rising, pushing up the Earth's crust. Now, mountains are larger than hills and steeper than hills. Mountains can exist in groups or they can exist by themselves. A mountain range is a series of mountain peaks in the same geographical area, while a mountain system is a group of mountain ranges that are connected over a much larger area. Some examples of mountain ranges in the world are the Alps, the Andes, the Himalayan mountain ranges, the Rockies, and Appalachians, or Appalachians. Now a mountain system, now a mountain system is also called a mountain belt. Some examples of mountain systems would be the Pacific Mountain System. This is where the mountain ranges, remember this is multiple mountain ranges, stretch from northern Canada down the Pacific coast of North America, moving all the way down to the northwest of Mexico. So it's moving north of Canada through the United States by California all the way down to Mexico. So it's multiple mountain ranges connecting. The word topography refers to different elevations, a variety of elevations and arrangements of landforms. This is going to be talking about uh, something that could be very high or very low, low dealing with uh, below sea level, very high uh, up to mountains above sea level. While we're going to focus on this measurement above sea level is called elevation. Well, a mountain's actual height is different from elevation. The mountain's actual height is actually referring to the height of the summit from the base, okay? So when we go to the bottom of the mountain, to the top of the mountain, that's the actual height. But elevation is referring to sea level to the actual top of the mountain. So remember, actual height is base of the mountain to the apex, while elevation is referring to above sea level, which may not be at the base, it may be above the base. Now the terrain is referring to the surrounding ground at the base. So you may hear the word apex to terrain, referring to actual height. Now here's another term that you need to know. Maybe you can make some Quizlets or your own Kahoot or index cards for all of these terms. The relief is referring to the difference between the height of the highest and lowest elevation. So if I'm comparing uh, some mountains or if I'm looking at some plains, well mountains are going to have a high relief. They're going to have a very large distance between the highest point and the lowest point or the highest elevation. While plains are going to have, or plateaus, are going to have a very low relief. They're going to have a very small distance between the top point. Now there's different uh, shapes of the structures that are formed, and these are called landforms. So a mountain is a landform, a valley is a landform. So you can see a valley uh, goes in, uh, a trench goes in, so these are different shapes that are created and these are called landforms. Now many different landforms could include, as I said, valleys, mountains, um, deserts, plains, plateaus, lakes, beaches. And then uh, the term orogeny is referring to the forming or making of mountains. This is something uh, we will be talking about uh, multiple times in this chapter, orogeny. Uh, think of Genesis, genie, Genesis, uh, forming, making, start, beginning. And this is usually going to be forming through tectonic plates. We talked about when we have subduction, mountains, volcanoes will form because of convergence. When we have continent and continent convergence, mountains are going to be formed. If we have um, uh, two oceanic plates converging, we can form a trench. So we have many... Uh, shapes, many different landforms being created. On this page we have six bolded terms and as I said before it would be very wise to put these on index cards and start studying these. 
But first we have the crust. The crust uh, that we've talked about before, the continental and oceanic crust, the continental crust is much thicker. It is lighter, less dense. So usually it's going to force the thinner, more dense oceanic crust underneath it when subduction happens. But the continental crust is not underwater, so it is going to be what we're walking on. Uh, while the oceanic crust is thinner, and that is usually uh, below the ocean, and we refer to that as the ocean floor. Now, isostasy, iso meaning balance, uh, isostasy refers to the balance of the weight of rock, water, ice, and the upward force of the mantle. Now there's three uh, landform terms, basins, domes, and plateaus. Now, a basin is formed when the crust sinks into the mantle. It's the opposite of a dome. Basically, water can fill them, forming lakes. So this is a dip down, kind of like what a valley would be. A dome, however, is going to be the opposite of the basin. It's basically a landform when the strata, remember strata means layers, uh, when the sedimentary strata is going to be pushed up, it looks like an upside down bowl. Uh, this forms when magma is started pushing through and it's before it's creating that mountain, it's kind of pushing up the ground. Now plateaus are broad, flat regions, uh, basically uh, formed from sedimentary deposits opposite of a basin. Here's the basin. That's going to be uh, the indentation going down. It can be filled with water forming a lake. And here's a plateau. It's the flat regions of sedimentary rock. It can be between mountains or by itself. Now, tectonic mountains, we've talked about briefly. Mountains created through the tectonic process. Uh, these mountains can, can have many different shapes. Uh, when the tectonic plates slide past each other, when they're colliding, when they're pulling apart, uh, basically these are primarily going to be forming at divergent zones. These tectonic uh, mountains, as the earth is maybe moving away, primarily because of the tectonic forces that are slowly pulling rock apart. Now, fold mountains are mountains that form when the rock strata fold. They bend. Uh, they may not have reached their elastic limit, so they can bend. Now, there are three terms here that tie in with the fold mountains. and The first one is the anticline. The anticline refer to the arch of rock layers, and these layers have been pushed into an upward force. While a syncline is more of a downward fold, a trough or a trough. And this downward fold is formed just like an anticline, but it drops down. And then you have a monocline. Monocline is basic the motion that uh, smoothly folds the strata above the fault, creating a step. Here's the anticline, and I'll show you a visual of this when we're in class. But basically, the uh, rock, the strata, is pushed up. A big hint for this is the letter A. If you look at the strata, it looks like the letter A. The letter A, capital A, gets pushed up. We can kind of visualize the letter A. While the syncline, the strata gets pushed down, and we can think that it looks like an arrow pushing down a monocline, mono meaning one, so only one section of it drops down, kind of creating that step. Now, fault block mountains are specifically uh, found at your faults uh, when you have uh, perhaps um, one or more normal faults and this creates these jagged uh, apexes, these jagged peaks and uh, these are when these tectonic forces are exerted at different and opposite directions is a region which characteristics that separate it from the surrounding terrain. It doesn't belong. It's very different. Okay, here's an example of a fault block mountain. Now we have rift valleys and grabens. Basically, a rift is a steep walled valley, and this usually will happen at uh, probably divergence. This usually happens at the mid oceanic ridges, and then the grabens are these. Uh, little pieces that they look like little triangles, either being pushed up or dropping down between different uh, areas of a normal fault. Here's uh, the 27 terms that I discussed in the video. I would encourage you to put them on index cards or Quizlet. Uh, the definitions are th found throughout this PowerPoint. Good luck!